Um, but I'll, I'll just kind of get started and let me know if there's any questions as we go on. But hi, everybody. My name is Anna. I am a program officer with New York Foundation for the Arts, coordinating the NYC Women's Fund. Today's info session will be going over the music category. Um, and just a few notes before we start today's session. One, we are recording this so that we can post on the NIFA YouTube page uh, for later viewing. Um, secondly, for any questions, please direct them to the Q&A box. Um, you should see that um, on your menu. It'll be next to the chat function, but the Q&A box just lets us um, see the questions and uh, respond to them. So if you could put your questions in the Q&A box, that would be great. Um, I'm joined by Judy, uh, Director of Grants at NIFA, as well as a colleague, Alicia, um, who is another program officer in the grants department. So we'll be going through the questions and answering them at the end of today's session. Okay, great. Um, so just a little bit about the Women's Fund. The NYC Women's Fund is administered by the New York Foundation for the Arts, or NIFA, in partnership with the City of New York Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment, or MOM. Uh, the NYC Women's Fund is part of a groundbreaking series of initiatives by the City of New York Mayor's Office um, for Media and Entertainment that addresses the underrepresentation of women in film, music, television, and theater. The goal of the music category, which is what we'll talk about today, is to support recording or video projects that are made by, for, or about all who identify as women and or include a female producer credit, writing credit, engineer credit, um, or women in a musical role. The fund will provide grants to support the production of a new EP album or music video um, for yet to be released work and the maximum grant is 20,000. Um, so we'll start the presentation. So the NYC Women's Fund applications opened on Tuesday, July 26th at 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time and will close Tuesday, November 1st at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, applicants will be notified of their uh, status by March of 2023. Application forms are now available online at nyfa.org slash NYC Women's Fund. Today's presentation will give an overview of the music category, talk about the eligibility criteria, go over the application form, including an overview, work samples, and budget, and allow for plenty of time for question and answer. So the goal of the music category we already sort of talked about at the beginning, um, but just to reiterate, uh, the maximum potential grant for this program is 20,000 um, and the grant uh, funds projects in any music genre. Um, please note that NIFA will ask applicants to select a genre that best describes their project. Uh, this is for data collection only and will not be shared with the panel. Um, and to reiterate as well, the applicant can be either the producer, composer, solo musician, ensemble, band, or orchestra, um, either not-for-profit or commercial in nature. So to talk about some eligible project types, the fund will provide grants to support the production of a new EP, album, or music video um, for yet to be released work. So one option is recording an EP or album. Recordings must be an original studio recorded EP or album. It must feature a minimum total playing time of 15 minutes with at least three distinct tracks or an album with a minimum total playing time of 30 minutes with no minimum track requirement. If you choose to uh, do a music video, filming and producing a music video, applicants can apply for funding to create a music video for an original studio recorded track. Um, and just noting it is possible to do a combination of both um, if your project allows.
So to talk about the eligibility criteria for this program, in addition to being made by, for, or about all who identify as women, projects are eligible if they feature any of the following. A, a strong women's perspective. B, include a woman identified director and or producer and or writer or songwriter and or engineer uh, for recordings or C, a woman in a lead musical role. The applicant must reside in any of the five boroughs of New York City and applicants do not need to be US citizens, but must be able to provide a W-9 with a social security number or individual taxpayer identification number or EIN um, after selection. Um, to continue the eligibility criteria, artists cannot currently be represented by a major label. Independent artists and artists represented by smaller labels are eligible. Artists to be recorded, whether they are the applicant or not, must demonstrate a minimum of two of the following. An evidence of a growing fan base, recent or current performance schedule, locally, nationally, or internationally, media coverage, awards and honors, or previous funding. Projects must be ready for production at the time of application. Projects must all, uh, be completed by March 31st of 2024. Completed projects must be distributed either physically and or digitally, whether by download or streaming. Funded projects must complete a final report, clearly outlining how the NYC Women's Fund was used to complete the project, along with sharing information on attendance numbers and public access plans or outcomes. Funds must be used to complete the project outlined in the application form. Funds may be allocated as the applicant needs to complete the project. However, funds cannot be used to purchase capital goods. Um, lastly, projects must follow at least one of two criteria, um, one being 75% of its total shooting or recording dates taking place in New York City, or 75% of its production costs uh, being incurred directly in New York City. So moving on to the application form. Uh, the application form will ask for some applicant information. The applicant, or if different, the recipient of funds, must be a current resident of New York City. Applicants will be asked to provide a New York City residential address, contact information such as phone and email, and names and contact information for performers, composers, producers, directors, um, if they're doing a music video. So some project information for your project, you will be asked to provide project name and running time or proposed length of music video or album, a project overview. This includes titles and composers of the tracks to be recorded, as well as any relevant information such as musical approach or conceptual or thematic threads. You'll be asked to provide how your project represents voices, experiences, and perspectives of all who identify as women, production schedules, and plans to complete by March 2024, and plans for promotion and distribution. Um, so this includes whether the recording will be distributed digitally and or physically um, by CD, for example, if digitally, please indicate whether by download or streaming services and what channels will be used. If physical, indicate initial pressing and how they will be sold or distributed. Here you can also include who the target audience is and how they will be reached. So moving on to the creative team and some more project information. 
Um, so you'll be asked to upload a PDF document demonstrating evidence of a fan base or industry support. This may be reviews, press coverage, social media following, touring schedules, past honors, grants, or other recognition. Um, and as mentioned before, you must show at least two of the above. Um, you'll also be asked to upload brief biographies of the applicant, performers, producer, and any key participating artists. You will also be asked to either input a budget template uh, directly in Submittable, or you may upload a budget uh, to Submittable, showing your project's overall expenses and income. In addition to the budget, please also specify the following, which is the total dollar amount that you are requesting for your project, and an itemized list of how you plan to spend the NYC Women's Fund Award. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about budget in just a moment, but moving on to the music work samples. So for the work samples in the music category, you'll be asked to submit three work samples of up to um, three to five minutes each that are reflective of the work to be recorded. So if available, you may submit a demo of the proposed work an example including but not limited to a MIDI realization of the performance or of, of the pi uh, piano reduction. Please include title, composer, and date of recording in the metadata field. Um, this will pop up after you upload the work sample to Submittable. Optional applicants can also submit a score or lyric sheet if desired for the work to be recorded. Okay, so going back to the budget related questions on the application form. So the NYC Women's Fund allocation, this question asks, how do you plan to use the NYC Women's Fund to complete your project? For this, please include an itemized list for the requested fund allocation on your project. This list should account for the full spend of the requested NYC Women's Fund Award amount. In the itemized list, please also specify the dollar amount of each expense item. This is important to note, applications that do not specify how the NYC Women's Fund Award will be spent are ineligible. Um, so definitely spend some time thinking about what your itemized list is for this question, add in the dollar amounts um, and double check it because if the panel is not able to understand what this question is asking, then we would have to mark the application is ineligible. So spend a little time on this question. The dollar amounts for each item should equal your total NYC Women's Fund request. No more than 20% of the award can be used for marketing and distribution. And as a general rule, the NYC Women's Fund is meant to support artist fees first and foremost, but it is not appropriate for physical items or any equipment purchases equipment rentals are acceptable. And moving on to the budget table, um, you will be asked to complete a budget showing your overall project expense, ex expenses, income, and any applicable notes for your proposed project. You may choose between filling out a provided budget template in Submittable, or uploading your own budget. And if you do choose to upload your own budget, I would take a look at the budget template in Submittable just to give an idea um, of what we're looking for. Please note, applicants do not need to complete all budget lines. Artist fees should include all related expenses, such as union fees. Please add unlisted budget items under other for each category and explain these expenses in the budget notes section. Subtotals and project totals will update automatically in the template. 
So this is an example of the budget table expense sheet in Submittable. Um, if you choose to upload your own budget, you can still reference this sheet. You can see on the left column under description are several line items for the playwright. Um, oh, this is actually for the theater application. My apologies. Um, but you can see the description of several line items for the music category. This will be specific to music. And you'll see under each subcategory is an other list. So for artistic other, that's where you'll put your um, unlisted budget items. And you can also see that the subtotal um, will automatically update. To the right of that, you'll see the total expense. Here you'll want to include the total dollar amount um, for your proposed project. So this is an overall project expense sheet. So overall, how much you plan to spend. Um, and on the right of that, you will see the budget notes section. This is an optional section if you do feel um, that you would like to list more um, information on each line item. And moving on to the budget table income sheet. Um, this is the income sheet that you will be um, looking at in Submittable. And again, if you do choose to upload your own budget, please do include an income sheet as well. Um, on the left, you'll see the columns with the line items for contributed income, earned income, um, and you'll see the subtotals as well. Um, each of these are line items for potential income sources, and you do not need to fill out each one. To the right of that, you will see a column for the amount. This is where you'll list the dollar amount for each um, potential income source. And this is, again, for your full project budget. To the right of that, you will see a budget note section. And this is another optional section where you're able to um, add in, for example, if it's federal funding, you could add in a couple of um, different names of funding sources, as well as saying if they are pending um, or confirmed um, in, in the budget notes column. And noting that there's the totals as well, so that will update um, automatically in Submittable. Okay, um, so moving on from the application form, um, the application demographics. So NIFA will ask all grant applicants to complete a demographic questionnaire. These answers are not part of the application and responses will remain anonymous and will not be linked to your identity. For assistance in applying uh, New York Foundation for the Arts is committed to supporting artists from every background and at all stages in their creative careers. We strongly encourage artists of color, LGBTQ plus artists, and artists with disabilities to apply. To request an accommodation or if you need assistance in applying online, please email nycwomensfund at nyfa.org. We ask that requests for accommodation be made as soon as possible, preferably no later than October 18th, just to allow adequate time for staff to support you in submitting an application in on time. And before you begin your application, all application questions, FAQs, and guidelines can be downloaded from NIFA's website. You can find and download the PDF guidelines specific to the music category on the main landing page of the grant or email nycwomensfund at nyfa.org to request a copy. Okay, and so that concludes today's brief presentation about the music category. At this point, um, we will open it up for question and answer. I do see we have some questions in the chat, uh, in the Q&A box now. Um, and if you have questions to ask, please go ahead and put them in the Q&A 
um, box at, in your um, Zoom menu. Okay, so I'll get started on answering a few questions and keep um, submitting your questions if uh, you have more. So a few questions on eligibility. If we received a Niska Naifa Fellowship grant, are we ineligible? So first of all, congratulations. If you have received any other grant from New York Foundation for the Arts, um, including the Niska Naifa Fellowship, uh, then you are still eligible to apply to this grant. Um, the only exception to this is if you are a past recipient of the NYC Women's Fund Award, you are still eligible to apply so long as you have completed your previously funded project. But otherwise, if there's any other New York Foundation for the Arts grants um, that you're a recipient of, you are still eligible to apply. A follow-up question, are artists associated with the uh, NIFA fiscal sponsorship eligible to apply? Yes. If you have fiscal sponsorship with uh, NIFA, you are eligible to apply for this grant. A question, um, are music videos with original lyrics set to existing music eligible in this category? Um, no, music videos with original lyrics should also be set to original music. Um, so if this is something that you're interested in doing, um, I would recommend uh, working with somebody to do original music as well. The music involved in the music category for this program should all be new original music that has not been recorded before. Um, can the project be multi-tiered? For example, seeking funding for a live performance series along with a related live show at an NYC venue. Um, so this is a little bit complicated. I guess in a way, yes, the project can be multi-tiered. However, I will say um, this music category for the NYC Women's Fund is not necessarily applicable for live performance, either live performance series or a related live show at a NYC venue. Um, in general, this program is meant for recording. Um, an exception this could be if you were to record a live album, um, but it would have to be um, Kind of specific. So I, I guess in that case, uh, you can email me and we can go over the specifics of that, but it should be generally like a studio, studio recorded EP or album. Um, but if you did do a live, a free live performance as part of your public access, that's another kind of um, thing that we could talk about uh, specific to your project. Um, I am a woman and plan to interview film videotape great women musicians. Is that eligible for this grant? Um, it wouldn't maybe not be applicable to the music category if it's an interview series about musicians. If it was more of a music video series, then it would be more applicable to this. Um, but in terms of it being more of an interview series, I don't think they would be applicable to this category. It could be applicable to the um, documentary web series category, potentially. However, I will note for media um, that principal photography would need to be completed. So for music, um, these are production grants. And for media, um, they are finishing funds. Um, so for the music category, while you can submit for a music video as a production grant, um, you would not be able to submit something that would be more of a web series or an interview series um, that would be more under media for which it would be finishing funds. My project is a multimedia music and dance show performed by women and in homage to women in tango. Should it be just music or could I include dance? Um, you can include dance if it's a music video series of some kind. Um, I'm yeah, curious about what you mean by show, if it's like a live performance. Um, as I stated, the music category is not as eligible for performance. It's more for studio recorded EP or album or a production of a music video. Um, so feel free to email 
the NYC Women's Fund at nyfa.org um, for specific questions related to your project. If the composer of the piece and the conductor of the piece are female identifying, is the composition eligible? Um, yes, it should be. Um, the applicant may be uh, a composer. Can you clarify the original music element? Does this mean recordings of existing musical works, specifically referencing classical compositions, would not be eligible? Unfortunately, yes, this is true. So the original music element just states that the music to be recorded should not have been released or recorded in any capacity in the past. So classical compositions, um, some spirituals, uh, some folk music, um, jazz standards, that kind of thing. If it had been recorded by anyone in the past, then unfortunately it is not eligible for this particular program. So moving on to a few general questions. Can I apply for two categories? Unfortunately, no. Uh, applicants to the NYC Women's Fund will need to apply to only one category. Um, if we find that there was an application with two categories, we will email you um, to ask you to please withdraw one of the applications. Um, so please do only apply in one category. This does also apply if you are a key collaborator on another project. So for example, if you are um, the musical artist on one project and then the producer on another project, um, that would still count as two applications since you're in the core collaboration group. Um, so please do only apply to one category um, and be mindful if you have a collaborator who is applying as well. Um, yeah, we will ask for those duplicate applications to unfortunately withdraw one. Um, so to be mindful of your time, please do apply to one category. Um, if we receive a funding source after the application has been sent past the deadline, do we have to send an amendment? Um, I think this is a question regarding the income sheet of the budget. No, uh, we do not need to see an amendment um, if the application has already been sent. Anything past the deadline, um, we will not make changes to your application. Um, if you do have things in your application that you'd like to change before the deadline though, do email us and we can open it back up for editing. Um, but in terms of the funding source, we do not need to see that. Does this funding project happen every year? Um, we have been running the NYC Women's Fund for four cycles. We did take a one year break in 2020, um, but the uh, while we do not have a confirmed um, cycle five for this project, um, we are actively working with the funder to seek um, that as a possibility. So it is um, possible that we will offer this program again next year, but it is not um, necessarily guaranteed yet. I want to submit a music video project, but I don't have a fan base at this point in my musical endeavors. Can I still submit something? Um, yes, uh, in this case, potentially send me an email. We can look through other options. We will have to submit two of those um, kind of fan base related questions for that um, application, but it's possible that we could find um, a different way to submit. So do send me an email and we can work um, on that. What does it mean for a project to have a strong woman perspective? This is a great question. Um, so you can think of this as a prominent women's perspective. Um, it doesn't necessarily have a defined meaning. Um, it's something that you will have to kind of define for yourself, but essentially, um, yeah, you can look at it as having a prominent women's perspective. Um, so a woman's perspective at the forefront, whether that's the writer, comp composer, um, producer, or the lead musical artist being a woman, um, you know, there, there are many ways to define that. So if you do have questions about it, you can send me an email, um, but it doesn't um, have like a 
very specific defined meaning, um, just something that you would want to communicate to the review panel so that they can see um, that there's a prominent women's perspective in this project. So moving on to some budget related questions. With this fund, am I allowed to pay collaborators as well or just myself as an artist? Yes, you are allowed to pay your collaborators, um, any artist fees as well as yourself. Um, hope that answers your question. For the income section of the budget sheet, is this income we anticipate on generating or income we have received from music related projects? This could be any income relating to your project that you were um, applying for, not necessarily income related to you yourself as an individual, if that makes sense. Um, but income related to the project. So whatever income you plan to put into this project. Um, and in the budget notes section, you can say a little bit more information about where the income is coming from, what sources, as well as if it's um, already secured or pending, um, or if you're... Um, hoping to receive the, the income, you can note that all in the budget notes section. If the budget is more than 20,000, which is the maximum of the Women's Fund grant, but there are other funds to cover these expenses, should the budget reflect the full costs or just show the expenses against the 20,000? This is a great question. So for the NYC Women's Fund allocation, which is a question outside of the budget table, um, you'll want that to reflect exactly what your request is. So for example, if your request is 20,000, you will want your NYC allocation itemized list to reflect the spend of that requested 20,000. For the budget, which is the expense and income sheet, you will want that to reflect your full project expenses and your full project income. So for the full project income, you can put the women's fund um, under your income since you are applying for the grant. Um, and you can just say that it's pending um, or that you've applied. Um, so the expenses should show the full project expenses. Let me know if that answers your question. If you are awarded the grant, does one have to provide receipts for expenditures after the fact? No, if you are awarded the grant, um, you should, um, you will receive um, an interim report and a final report from NIFA. There you will show us how you spent the award, but you will not be asked to re provide receipts um, or invoices uh, for the expenditures. Can studio space rental be a part of the budget? Yes, um, studio space rentals um, may be part of the budget for the time in which you're working on the project. So if you're renting a studio space for the project for a certain amount of time, um, go ahead and put that on your uh, expenditures sheet. Um, so a Few more questions on eligibility. What if the music has been recorded by myself but not released? This is an interesting question. Um, this should be okay. Um, if the music has already been recorded but not released, um, yeah, it depends on what you're using the funds for. If you're using the funds to mix and master, then I think that that would work, um, but just keeping in mind that no more than 20% of the funds may be used towards marketing and distribution. I am writing a score for a musical film, a musical that exists as a film rather than a live stage work, and we need to record the music to make the film. Should my collaborator and I apply in this category or the media category? I think, um, if you're writing a score for the film and you do plan to release that studio recorded score as an album in and of itself, um, which films do do, um, then you should apply for the music category 
to record an album, um, like a musical album, basically. If you apply in the media category, that would be finishing funds for the film. So that would need, so the film would need to have been shot already and you should be ready to move into post-production essentially. Um, if you are at that stage though, you could apply in the media category and we will be having an info session on the media category in about three weeks. Um, so you can um, attend that and ask those questions then as well. But take a look at the media guidelines um, to, to get a better sense of which category you would fit better in. Is it okay that I would be the only female on the project, but I am the singer and songwriter slash director? Yes, that would be okay. If the piece is classical, but has been recently rediscovered with no history of recording, would it be considered for the grant? I think this is possible. Um, it's a little bit of a specific situation, but do send me an email and we can go over that. Um, but if it has not been recorded before, um, it is potentially eligible. Um, but send me an email, we could talk about that. My band is a really small indie artist and our following though growing isn't in the thousands. Are we still eligible for this program? Uh, yes, you should be eligible. Um, so long as you show some evidence of a growing fan base, doesn't need to be big, um, but yeah, we do need to see two examples um, from that list that I had shared earlier. So some questions about the work sample. If it is a VR music video, can the storyboard and the music not yet pro-recorded be an acceptable submission? I do plan to do studio recordings and use that for the video. Um, yes, that should be acceptable. For the music video, um, we don't really have an option to upload a storyboard per se, um, but if you did feel that this was necessary for the VR video, um, it's possible you could upload that in the score sheet section where it allows for a document um, versus a musical uh, file. Um, and it's up to the panel's discretion whether or not they would uh, take a look at that. But for the music, even if it's not been professionally recorded, uh, that works as the music samples. Um, and you will be asked to submit three uh, music work samples of three to five minutes each. I plan to record music for a chamber ensemble. I already have some music, but they're, those are for different instruments. I plan to arrange them for the recording. Is it okay if I submit the version of music before I arrange them for the recording? Give me a second. I think so. Um, I'm not sure if I'm 100% clear where on what stage you're at with the arrangement, um, but I guess I'll say that recording music for the chamber ensemble is eligible. And um, yeah, whatever version you have now, if it could be considered as a demo, um, then that would be acceptable. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. If, if not, please do send me an email. I'm happy to kind of go over that in more depth. Um, so a general question, what is the average grant amount awarded and how many applicants are awarded? So there is not necessarily an average grant amount that I can share at this stage. Um, the maximum is 20,000 and it's really up to the review panel. Every year we have a new group of panelists and they come in with fresh eyes to see what projects um, they would like to award and of course there's you know they always want to award more uh, projects than they're able to so it really depends on how um, the review panel looks at the applications and that really determines what the grant amount awarded would be um, so 
it's not necessarily um, as helpful to share an average since we just don't know what the review panel would do this year. Um, in terms of how many applicants are awarded, though, you can find that on the NIFA website. So going to the Women's Fund landing page, and that would be nyfa.org slash NYC Women's Fund. You should be able to navigate on the sidebar. You'll see the past cycles from cycles one through three, all of the applicants that have been awarded for this program. Also noting that music um, was a new category added in cycle two. Um, so there have been music uh, projects that were awarded in cycle two and three. How does one provide proof of being an NYC resident? Um, you will be asked to provide a New York City residential address in the application. Once we do um, award application, uh, award the applications that are successful, um, at that stage, we will ask for additional documentation, um, such as like a W-9 and that kind of information. Um, but for the application itself, we'll just ask for an NYC residential address. Um, so a few more budget-related questions. Can the funds pay for rehearsals for artist and studio fees? Yes, so if you're rehearsing for the project um, and your artist will be working with you on that, it is possible to pay them for their time. Um, I would combine all of the artist fees together. So for rehearsals, um, studio fees, that kind of thing, if you're working with, you know, for example, like a guitarist, um, if they're gonna be rehearsing with you and recording with you, um, you can put that all into one artist fee uh, line item um, for the budget. Should we have to travel outside of New York City to work at a studio with a collaborator? And would that be okay as an expense? Um, yes and no. So if you do plan to travel outside of New York City to work at a studio or with a collaborator, um, it would technically be okay so long as your NYC Women's Fund allocation um, is still within 75% of that budget being spent in New York City. So 75% of the NYC Women's Fund award should be spent within the five boroughs of New York City, whether that's at a studio in New York City or with a collaborator based in New York City. If you plan to do substantial work at a studio outside of New York, it's technically possible, but you would have to only use 25% of the award for that expense. Um, otherwise, you would want to find additional income sources to cover that just to um, be mindful of the New York City requirement of this grant. Let me know if that answers that question. If only 20% of funds are to be used for marketing, does that mean that only 20% of funds can be allocated for music video? Um, this is an interesting question. So no, not necessarily. It depends on what your project is doing. So for example, if you are recording and producing a music video for your project as your project, um, that is, you know, the project itself. So 100% of the funds would be used towards that music video for either, you know, recording the music or producing just the video itself. Um, in terms of if you're recording an album or EP and also producing music video, um, it is fine to also use funds for that music video, so long as you um, clearly state that in your application and in your budget. Um, for marketing, what we really mean is if you're hiring um, a PR person or a PR team, buying advertising space, um, if you're shooting like photos or video that would be used for marketing purposes only and not necessarily as a standalone music video, 
Um, those would all kind of fall under marketing and distribution. Um, but in terms of just creating a music video, it is um, totally okay for the funds to be used for that. Just be clear in your application that that's what you're requesting the award for. Um, another eligibility question. I have released some demos of music on Bandcamp that I may or may not include in this project. If I do include, would that make my project application ineligible? Um, if it's a demo, I think that it would be, it's a little bit complicated. I do see what you mean though. Um, in this scenario, the best case scenario to make sure that your application is eligible is you can still apply for an album so long as the tracks to be recorded um, that are funded by the award are original and have not been released. Um, and you can specify that in your application. Um, in terms of it being demos, I would have to double check and just see because um, it's not as ideal, but I, I it's it's potentially possible. Um, it would not make, make the entire project application ineligible if you have other tracks that would be um, original music that have not been released or recorded yet. Um, but of course, submitting demos as work samples uh, do work. Another eligibility question, if we are not sure yet who our collaborators will be, are we still eligible? For example, artists for cover art, PR firm, engineer for mixer and mastering. Yes, you are still eligible if you're not sure who your collaborators will be. Um, if you are still working uh, to identify those collaborators, I would just state that in your application and do still submit bios for um, any other confirmed artists, including yourself, um, and just say that um, you're working to identify artists for um, those uh, pieces. Um, so another budget question. If I want to hire a photographer and a videographer to shoot during the music studio recording sessions, is that considered as part of the marketing budget? This is a great question. Um, if you do plan to use the photos or video as marketing, if that makes sense. So if you plan to, you know, for example, buy um, like a, uh, Instagram ad or a TikTok ad um, using the videos that you've shot, um, then that would be considered marketing. Um, but if you're using those for any purpose that's specific to the project, for example, if you take a photo and then you use it for your album art, um, that wouldn't necessarily be considered marketing. So if it's something specific like this, we could talk about it um, via email. Okay, great. And so that is the end of the questions that I see on my end. Um, if anybody has any last minute questions or any follow up questions, um, please do put those in the Q&A box. And we have a few moments remaining. So I see a question here, would it be okay to collaborate with artists that live outside of the US? Yes, technically it is okay to collaborate with artists that live outside the US. Um, the only stipulation of course would be that 75% of your um, award should still be spent in New York City um, on New York City related expenses. So yes, you can work with an artist outside of the US, um, but just kind of be mindful of how that works out in your budget. Can I film a performance of works by women? I'm not sure if this would be eligible for this category, unless it would be 
like a music video for original yet to be released work. So for example, if um, these performances are of work that has not yet been recorded and you're working with those artists specifically to create music videos um, that are performance music videos, um, then technically that could be eligible. Um, but noting that the other eligibility guidelines would still need to be followed. Um, so the work would need to be original music. Um, another budget related question, how important is it to have significant contributed income? So this is a good question in terms of what the panel will be looking at. So the main um, goal of the budget is to give the panelists not only an idea of the scope of the project and um, kind of where you're at with the project, but also to tell them how feasible it is for the project to complete within the time frame. So for this grant, you'll be notified in March 2023 whether you uh, got the award or not. At that point, um, if you did receive the award, you have one year until March 2024 to complete the project. If, um, for example, the panel sees that it's a very large project involving you know, many artists and there is no income that has been contributed yet, it is possible um, that the review panel may view that as a feasibility issue where um, there would be a significant amount of fundraising left to do even after receiving the grant award um, in order for that project to feasibly complete within the timeline. Um, otherwise, it's not necessarily as um, important to show like significant contributed income. Um, it just all depends on what the panel is looking at, um, but just noting that one of the goals of the budget is to show the panel that um, this artist is able to complete within the timeline. Um, that is an important part of this program because they are project related grants. Can the album cover um, design costs be included in the budget as well? Yes, um, album cover art uh, can be included in the budget expense sheet. Um, if it's not listed as a budget line already, you can add that in um, one of the other sections and just state in the budget notes um, that that expense is for album uh, cover art design. Another question on work sample. Um, if none of the new of material is available at the time of application, would it be possible to use work samples, um, music that has been released related to the new project, but not part of the new project? Um, in certain cases, this can be eligible. I would recommend just going ahead and sending an email just to make sure because it is, um, you know, based on what the review panel would be looking for, it is best to see work that is representative of the, um, sorry, work samples that are representative of the music to be recorded. Um, but it is possible if there is nothing available to show at the time of application, um, to do other work samples, but go ahead and send me an email just to, so that we can make sure that we're um, uh, clear on what that is, because it can be different um, depending on what your project is and just those kind of details. Um, some more eligibility. Can my collaborating, presenting, recording, organization, a 501c3, apply on my behalf, even though it is an organization directed primarily by men? Um, yes, they can apply on your behalf if you are the lead artist. Um, it's possible, for example, for someone on that staff to complete the application if you um, are the lead applicant. Um, so if you'll be the lead artist on this project, but someone from another organization is filling out the form, that should be fine. I'm not sure if that answers the question, but let me know. 
If I'm not signed to a record label, but I am signed to a major publishing company as a songwriter, am I still eligible? It's a great question. Um, potentially no. Uh, do send me an email. Um, yeah, I think potentially I would double check on this. I haven't really, yeah, um, in terms of it being a publishing company as a songwriter. Um, yeah, send me an email and we'll see about that. Yeah, thank you for that question. Could you one time uh, more quickly review what you've said about the total expenditure and where should the, sorry. Could you explain what you said about the total expenditure and where the, NIFA expected or under pending be marked in the two expenditure related documents. Um, is this asking what the NYC Women's Fund expenditures are? Um, okay, so. In terms of the expenditure, let me just go ahead and show this again. Maybe this helps. Um, so to quickly talk about where the NYC Women's Fund should be marked in the expenditure related documents. So there are, there is one expenditure related document which is the budget table showing the expenses, which is what is on my screen now. And again, apologies, this is for the theater category. Here you will say, um, you will take a look at the line items on the left. Um, and then on the middle column, you will say what your total project expense is. So for example, if you have a producer, um, how much you are paying your producer for the total project. And then moving to the budget notes, that's where you could indicate additional information um, about that expense item. And again, the budget notes are optional. So that's only if you feel that that's helpful information to include. The next part of the budget is an income sheet. Um, this is where you will say, um, for example, if you have foundation grants, um, individual donations that sort of income. So for example, with individual donations, say you have you know, 10,000 in individual donations, and this is just an example, um, then you will say under individual donations and in the middle amount column, um, you would put that 10,000 there. Um, and that would be the total project income for individual donations. And then to the right of that, um, you could add additional notes and say whether that is confirmed or pending. Um, and again, the budget notes section is optional, but that's where for income, it is helpful to kind of give a sense of whether or not that income is actually confirmed, if it's pending or if it's something you plan to apply to. Um, that gives the panel just an idea of, you know, what that income source is. Um, so I hope that answers your question. The only other expense related um, section would be the NYC Women's Fund allocation, and that is an itemized list of how you plan to spend the award with the dollar amounts listed. Okay, um, so we are one minute over, so that concludes today's presentation. Um, I want to thank everybody for all of their questions and for your interest in this program. If you have additional questions, uh, please do feel free to email us at NYC Women's Fund, um, NYC Women's Fund at nyfa.org. Um, and uh, we'll answer some more specific questions via email there. Um, and thank you so much and uh, good luck in your application um, if you choose to submit one and thank you um, for attending today's session.